So Paul Salmon here, could have talked about uh, more specifically about making emergency landings uh, and engine out landing if you're to engine, uh, lose the engine completely on the gyro. And one of the first things I want to show you is that uh, when you lose the engine, uh, you, the biggest difference or one of the biggest differences or there's two big differences. Number one, there's a lot more drag on that prop when it's not turning at all. But there's also um, a fair amount of left pedal that you have to bring in to compensate for the torque. So let's look at the uh, normal configuration of the gyroplane. In fact, let's go around to the front and I'll show you that you want to have, uh, <clears throat> when the aircraft is, is uh, rigged uh, correctly, and here what we do is we line up the uh, front wheel with the long axis of the aircraft, and you can see here that aircraft is... That, that front tire is lined up just perfectly pointing in alignment with the long axis of the aircraft. So now if we were to walk around to the back of the aircraft and look at the rudder, you're going to see that the rudder is actually deflected to the right. So we'll line up at a distance from it. They were pretty much lined up with the long axis of the aircraft and the rudder is deflected to the right about 15 degrees. So if you take a look at that there, there's about 15 degrees of deflection. And you'll notice the trim tab on the rudder, which is right here, is actually in nearly in complete alignment with the long axis of the aircraft. And that's how it should be, all right? So now let me just quickly explain how to rig a, a gyroplane correctly. When, you, when you're setting, when you're adjusting the rudder, what you do is come in for a landing, come in and land on the mains, and when you set the, when you let the nose wheel come down and touch, the aircraft should not jerk to the left or to the right in either direction. It should, it should run true as soon as that nose wheel touches. All right, so that's the adjustment for the rudder. The second adjustment you're going to make on the trim tab is that <clears throat> the trim tab is used to adjust the aircraft so that it will remain in trim at cruise flight. So you want to go up and fly the aircraft at about 80 or 90, put a trim string on it on the front windshield. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And the trim string should be going straight up the windshield. It shouldn't be deflected to the left or to the right. If it is, you need to then bend the trim tab the appropriate amount to get the uh, aircraft so that it'll fly uh, in trim with the string straight up and down the windshield. So to make a uh, trim string for the aircraft, uh, luckily the <clears throat> in the case of the Magni, it has a center uh, screw here on the windshield so it's easy to tell where the center of the windshield is. And you just take a uh, piece of, of uh, yarn, about, oh, somewhere between eight to 10 inches long, and um, just take a piece of masking tape, center it right in the center of the windshield. And when the aircraft is flying and the aircraft is in trim, then this went, this uh, piece of yarn should be going straight up the windshield, all right? So if, if, the, um, if it's not in trim, then the yarn's gonna be over to the left like that, or it's gonna be over to the right like that, all right? So, and if you've got, if the string is to the left, like that relative to the aircraft then, then <clears throat> you're gonna need to add more right rudder, or more right um, rudder effect on the, on the uh, trim tab. And if it's over here on the right, then you're gonna need to have more left effect on the trim tab, all right? So, and when you go to bend your trim tab, the easiest way to do it is uh, we're gonna, it will look here at the trim tab. You got a series of screws that holds the trim tabs on. It's only uh, seven screws, lucky seven there. Just go ahead and take the trim tab off and you'll see that the bend occurs just past the holes in the, in the uh, uh, tab. And we have an actual brake. We take it off and put it on the brake to get it uh, bent so that you don't uh, run the risk of actually damaging the rudder. A lot of people will take two pieces of like two two befores or something put on both sides of the thing and clamp it down real tough and then try to have somebody hold the rudder and they'll bend more on the trim tab it actually works much, and you can do it that way you run the risk of actually you know cracking where the uh, trim tab attachment is there it's actually a lot better idea to take it off and try to just add a little bit of bend to it with a uh, with a brake and then to risk reinstall the trim tab back on the on the aircraft so so the more bend that you put in the trim tab the more you bend the trim tab to the left the more it's going to add it's going to move the nose of the aircraft to the right all right 
and um, you can conceptualize it as less of a left bend to the trim tab or uh, less angle to it would be bringing the aircraft's nose to the left so and again you just have to experiment a little bit with it uh, adding a little more or a little less uh, amount of um, angle to the trim tab to get the aircraft uh, flying straight uh, in trim uh, at cruise and the other thing I failed to mention was when you're flying at a cruise at 80 or 90 uh, you need to be sure and take your feet off of the rudder pedals in other words you just want to have the aircraft in level flight flying straight ahead take your feet off the pedals and this trim string should go straight up the center of the windshield like that and if you're getting again left to right deflection on it you need a little more adjustment in your trim tab on the on the back of the rudder there okay so let's talk about what happens uh, when you shut the engine down on a gyro plane basically you, we just looked at the how the aircraft is rigged or how the rudder is deflected to the right and that compensates for the torque of the engine when it's running so when you shut that engine down you no longer have that torque that you need to compensate for which leads you with a bit of excess uh, right rudder and so when you're coming out of the sky coming in for a landing you'll notice that you need to add a little bit of left rudder it's, it's easily <coughs> easily compensated for and again just conceptualize that you're just going to need to keep your nose straight down the runway as you come in uh, the reason I mentioned it is because it's a fair amount of left rudder that you have to bring in and so you should be prepared to do that uh, to make sure that you're touching down with the aircraft pointing the way that you're going right? so just expect that if you actually lost an engine that you're going to need to bring in a little extra left rudder to compensate for the alignment <coughs> of the aircraft at touchdown the second thing is even with the engine idling you know it's idling at 2600 rpm or whatever when you're coming in, in, an, in a power off landing where you brought the uh, engine all the way back down to idle at 2600 rpm or so uh, the prop does add some drag uh, but not near as much as when you shut the engine off completely when you shut that engine down completely it's like having three big flat uh, speed brakes on the back of the aircraft and it takes a fair amount more nose down to be able to achieve an adequate uh, airspeed for uh, you know for flare and touchdown and it's significant it takes uh, you know a few more degrees two or three degrees and it really feels like boy you feel like you're almost pointing the thing <laughs> straight down at the ground when you come out of the engine com or turn the engine off uh, completely and really the third thing that bears mentioning here is the fact that <clears throat> when you shut the engine down you still have complete control of the aircraft um, you can raise the nose lower the nose uh, uh, you can push the left rudder the aircraft will yaw to the left and will yaw to the right However, as you slow the aircraft down, uh, you have a significant loss in rudder authority. So just think about it this way. If the aircraft's sitting there and the engine's running, so you're probably doing all these practice emergency landings with the engine pulled back down to idle, 2600 RPM, you still have a fair amount of air being moved across that rudder, even at zero airspeed, because you could have it at zero airspeed and closed on the throttle just put, and having the nose up fairly high. And you still have a fair amount of air going across that rudder and you have a, a significant uh, rudder authority <clears throat> however when you shut the engine off and the prop's not turning and when you slow down to where you have essentially almost no airspeed you're down to 10 knots or 15 knots or whatever there's not very much rudder authority so if you're needing to make a turn let's say you're up there and you're needing to turn 90 degrees or whatever to get to your spot Remember that you've got to come down a little on the nose to get some forward airspeed or you're not going to have enough rudder authority to make a turn uh, very quickly at all. As you let the nose come down and you've got you know, 30, 40 knots of air going across that rudder, you've got very good rudder authority. You can turn to the left, you can turn to the right. And here in just a minute, we're going to go back up and I'm going to demonstrate all these things. I'm going to shut the engine down to show you, and I put a trim string on it to show you that the aircraft's going to be out of trim and that's going to require some left pedal to compensate. I'll also uh, will be cognizant of looking at the airspeed and I'll, I'll get in on the rudders at varying airspeeds to show you the difference in the amount of authority that, that the uh, rudder has based on your forward airspeed. So we'll be doing that next. Okay, so we're taxiing out to do an intersection departure runway two at Alpha. And we'll get in the air. We'll climb on up a bit and do a few engine out uh, approaches. And we'll uh, 
look at the uh, trim string to see how much it's out of trim after you uh, shut off the engine. Also look at the um, difference in rudder authority as you slow down, as you bring the nose up to slow down, but you lose a lot of rudder authority and it's uh, quite, be quite evident there. Runway 2 at, uh, at uh, Alpha. 7 Charlie, Charlie, make left traffic, runway 2, intersection Alpha, cleared for takeoff. Cleared to go, uh, 2 at Alpha for 7 Charlie, Charlie. Again, we've got a fair amount of wind today, and it uh, shouldn't take hardly any distance at all to get this thing in the air. Midfield on the downwind for uh, a few practice merge and landing on runway two. Seven Charlie Charlie, runway two, clear for the option. Clear for the option, runway two, seven Charlie Charlie. So we're climbing on up. We're at about a thousand feet now. But I go up a little higher just to illustrate a few things. So we're going to go for the touchdown markers on the runway, on runway two here. So I'm going to come all the way out of the power. Idle for about 10 seconds here. Kick tire, 40 on the west side of runway two. I'm going to head back to the rim. Shut the engine off. Okay, so we're going about 40 knots. So now if I, if I press the left pedal, I got good left pedal authority. Got good Airport right 8, hold short, stand by. Hold short, Airport 8. We'll bring the nose up to almost zero airspeed. Now when I press the rudder, I'm pressing, I'm getting almost nothing. So I got to let my nose come down a little bit to get some more authority. Okay, so we've got a lot of different options. Seven, Charlie, Charlie, same position. Now we're up, uh, well, we're about 1,000, send you 1,300 over the numbers runway 2 for emergency landing, or practice emergency landing. Uh, <clears throat> trim my stick so it's not quite so heavy. So again, about a vertical descent. I'm slowed down to about 10 knots here. I'll lower my nose a little bit, get a little more airspeed. I can get a little better rudder authority, but I yeah, would just keep coming down at about 20 knots. And you can see I can do an S turn, turn to the right.
Turn back to the left. Whatever it takes to get down to where I need to be. So I definitely got my runway made, so I've got altitude to get rid of. That's the situation you want to be in if the aircraft actually quits on you. You want to have altitude to get rid of, not the other way around. It's hard to stretch it out and get to your spot. Hate to run out of altitude and luck all at the same time. Now, as we get lower, we're going to start letting our speed come up a little bit. So I'm going to let the airspeed come up to about 40 here. Because it's a lot easier to accelerate from, say, 35 or 40 to get 65. You know, I'm going to get a little close. Let's do a little bit of a turn to the right. So it's easier to get back from, say, 40 to 65. You can do that pretty quickly. But from 0 to 65 takes a long, long time. So now we're going to let our nose start coming down a little bit. All right, going to let my nose come down, try to get my speed back. Cape Tower, 0276 Charlie Papa, 10 miles south, inbound Cape Tower. All right. Oh. 276 Charlie Papa Cape makes straight in runway 2, wind 030 at 15, gusting 20, altimeter 3007, report a 5 mile final. 6 Charlie Papa will report at 5 mile final for runway 2. Airport 8, uh, did you want to go through the intersection and get on uh, Delta or Alpha? How did you want to do it? Uh, either way, I can just cross and go on Alpha. Airport 8, proceed as your question. Uh, 8, Roger, we'll cross 1-0 on, uh, on to Alpha, Airport 8. Yes, I'm Charlie. Charlie's on the go again, runway 2, left hand center. Seven, Charlie, Charlie, Roger. Tractor 800 Fox Trot Alpha at the ramp, ready to taxi 2A. Zero Fox Alpha, taxi to runway 2A. Taxi 2A, 800 Fox Trot Alpha. And 7 Charlie, Charlie, will, will you be doing the same thing again? Uh, Roger, that would be a vertical descent uh, off the uh, threshold down to the uh, touchdown markers on 2. 7 Charlie, Charlie's number 2, you're following the Cirrus, it's on a 5 mile final. So right there, we're looking for the Cirrus for 7 Charlie, Charlie. Okay, so let's, uh, how about this time we go for the number two, <coughs> number two on runway two. Good, we'll give that one a whirl. So, engine's all the way at idle. We're about 1,300, I'm going to shut her down there. So you'll notice that it's got string out to the right. Again, that's because of that lack of torque. If I add a little bit of left uh, rudder pedal, it'll come right back and line up. I don't have very much in the way of forward airspeed. There's some forward airspeed. And I'll let, take my feet off the pedals. You'll see it goes to the right. See, it falls to the right and you need some left pedal. Okay, I'm going to get our nose up here and get a little more of a descent going. And again, we're shooting for the number two on runway two. Let my speed come up a little. I'm carried at about 40. All right, now I'm going to get that nose down. Let's get that speed back. Well, darn. Just about, about 40 feet, but that's not too bad. Start it back up again. And then Charlie Charlie, I'd like to hover taxi down runway uh, 2. See, it is requested. Help you off on the uh, Fox truck. Roger that. So 
with this much wind today, we've got about 20 knots of wind. I can sit up here and kind of hover taxi this thing down the runway. I'm only going about 20, 20 knots across the ground. I'm going 40 indicated, which gives me about a 20 knot speed across the runway. Come out of my power a little bit, and I can sneak right on down to just a foot or two above the runway. Taxi or down the runway, down to Foxtrot. So when you're in a nice slow hover taxi like this, you're just kind of flying along, say 40 or 50 or whatever. And you get closer to your spot when you decide that you're going to land. All you have to do is keep the same attitude to the aircraft, just back out of the power a little bit. And as the aircraft settles down, right before you touch down, you can flare it just a little bit. So here we are, we're going about 40 now, 45 or so. So now I'm going to keep the same attitude to the aircraft. I'm going to back out of the power. You'll notice that the aircraft starts to settle. Here it comes. Now I'm going to flare just a little before I touch down. There we're on the ground. And we'll get out of the power. Grab it all the way forward. Get the wire on the stick.